Hi there, this is Miguel Campos here from Iberal University. And you are watching Teacher Learning Cast with Pete Herrera and Benjamin Stewart. Hello and welcome to Teacher Learning Cast this day, August 4th, 2018. My name is Benjamin Stewart calling from beautiful Aguas Calientes, Mexico. And this is Piri Herrera also from Aguas Calientes coming back from a month vacation from Teacher Learning Cast, but retaking this nice talks, conversation and exchanges with Dr. Benjamin Stewart and you all guys that are uh, joining. Thank you for everybody that is joining in the Facebook live transmission. Laura from... Uh, uh, from Southampton, a Maori, from um, Michoacan, uh, and people from Aguascalientes. Leslie here from Aguascalientes. You can have a better view and a better sound of the transmission if you click the link, uh, the link above. Benjamin, what, what have you been doing all this time that we just uh, postponed a little bit these transmissions? Yeah, we've been on a little hiatus here the last, what, three or four weeks, and it's good to be back uh, with the, the community sharing ideas. Uh, we typically try to do this on a weekly basis, but, uh, you know, we've had, uh, we had a couple of weeks off and, uh, we, we've had a couple of weeks back to work. And in fact, we're starting classes here in another week. Uh, we're going to start classes August 13th. So we're kind of in the mode of planning and, and preparing. And we've already had uh, discussions, Pity, about some technologies that we're thinking about uh, using the semester as we often do. And uh, today's really uh, about technology. And I'm excited about talking about uh, the app, WhatsApp, and uh, how you're integrating that in your own classroom. But uh, today's talk is kind of techy, a little nerdy. So uh, feel free to share some of your comments if you're watching us live or watching this recording. We're in Facebook and um, you can find us there, Teacher Learning Cast, and leave some comments. But uh, how about yourself, Petey? How, how are things going here as we get geared up for the next semester? Oh, as always, just uh, looking for what's going to happen next semester, like uh, trying to keep up the things that give me security and comfort. But at the same time, uh, with these exchanges and these talks with uh, different teachers, especially with you, Ben, talking about technology and the different resources we can use. I'm really happy to find that, as always, you have uh, be a wide view of what you can use and what you can do. And that gives me also a lot of ideas to try myself. And right now, I'm in that process, just deciding what's going to happen next semester. And, um, and, I, and I really like that. I really like that because one single thing, and, and I think this is something I would suggest to everybody that is watching us, uh, one little thing, one little change that you can make in your classroom, it's just the beginning for a series of changes or things and, and, and a lot of happenings that may occur during the semester. Right now, uh, for a single, uh, very simple thing, just as changing a platform is giving me light for new ideas and for new things to do. I just need to be really um, careful about the timing and careful about not going away from the contents I have to cover but enjoying, as always, the, the, the periods in, the, in, the, in between semesters here where we work. And also taking a course. I'm also taking a course right now. This, I, I, it's a worship, actually. It's a worship on development. And it's a worship on the, uh, uh, the well-being of the teacher. And I always enjoy this, uh, these courses. It's with uh, Dr. Cecilia Delgado. She's a psychologist. And she always has a very nice way to... Uh, bring you back on ground from whatever you are. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's really important. And hopefully maybe later in other broadcasts, you can share some of your insights from that class and uh, we can talk about related topics. I know um, as we've gotten kind of geared up for the semester for the first time here at the university, uh, Universidad Autónoma de Aguascalientes, uh, where PD and I teach, uh, we conduct we are conducting in fact in the process of conducting a kind of a pro like an intro class for upcoming students students who are just entering into the BA so um, think talking about well-being and, and uh, 
really looking at the whole person and and their their attitudes and 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 just yeah basically over their their well-being for for the for the for teaching and learning right. um i think it's really the same focus that we have also for this introductory course so that we can better prepare these students as they come in uh from high school coming into a ba program in teaching that they are a little bit more oriented and uh, adapted as they start this new uh, experience this new education uh, experience that they're going to partake so um yeah we're looking forward to getting started um pd and uh, most talks and we've had many but most talks that we have about technology uh often have to do with questions of how we want our students to interact with each other how do we want as the teacher to interact with the students these questions about how we might assess the goals and there's a lot of uh, underlining questions and and decisions that one needs to make as a teacher before he or she decides on what kind of technology uh, to be used and I, I think this is no exception talking about whatsapp and uh, uh, i've had some ideas about technology that i want to use this semester that maybe i can address it in other uh, weeks um, but uh, let's let's kind of get into it if we can, Petey. Um, again, if you're watching us, uh, feel free to uh, leave comments in uh, in Facebook. Leave comments about what how you're using uh, WhatsApp. If you're using it currently, or if you're even considering it, uh, what kind of questions and concerns that you might have using that type of technology? So, Petey, why don't we jump into it and uh, yeah, let us know. Yeah, why don't you start with discussing how you're planning on using WhatsApp for the semester? Right. V very, very quickly, Ben, before starting, just uh, for the people that is watching live, uh, Gabby from Zacatecas, Vero Duron, and, and everybody, uh, we invite you to join us. We do. We try to do this, as Ben says, on a regular basis on the week, but we have the videos on demand. You can look for us in Google as Teacher Learning Cast, Dr. Benjamin Stewart, or Teacher Learning Cast, Piri Herrera, and you're going to find all our web place, uh, places, the websites, and uh, the Facebook group and the videos that you can watch uh, prior uh, topics that we have discussed. Uh, thank you, Teacher Carmen, also for joining us. And um, and then you can leave your comments on prior videos or tell us what you want to hear, and you can join us whenever you want. Just uh, making that clear, because we have today a couple of visitors in Facebook Live Transmission. Uh, and yes, just to get into the topic, man, what's up? What's up for, for learning? I What I want to talk today, about is uh, what happened to my students in teaching workshop here at the Universidad Autónoma de Aguascalientes at the end of the semester. These are students that were teaching for the first time in simulated classes. This is a uh, second semester in the BA in English language teaching. And uh, for most of them, it was the first time in front of a group and the first time uh, implementing a lesson plan in a, re, in, a, in, a, in a class, which was simulated because the students were their own classmates, and, but they, they had these sessions of 15 minutes. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else to say as a context, but uh, along the way, you may, you may clarify a little bit more about this. Uh, the, the point is that by the end of the semester, they have a final presentation after different classes given throughout the semester. They teach one final class, uh, which may be from 15 to, to 20 minutes. And in theory, it's the, the class in which they, they go for, for it. They, they put their best work and they show everything they learned throughout the semester or all, all the abilities they, they develop throughout the semester and they try to do their best. And um, I had a session in which students decided to use WhatsApp in, the, in their classes. And uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is the analysis of have they done this before no not during the semester and being the first time they they taught they hadn't used whatsapp before in the class so they risk it to use it for a final important class uh, and it was the first time they were some of them were trying it because it was like three students that tried this uh, and and i think at least two of them was the first time that they that they dared to do it and, and I was really glad because it was a final class and I would think that they would go for the sure thing, for, for, for making sure that whatever they do is something they have done before. And some of the other students try that. Uh, 
kind of repeated certain aspects of the classes they had worked better with. But these three guys, they risk it um, with the use of WhatsApp and, uh, and mobile devices in the classroom. Uh, the use of Facebook, the use of WhatsApp, and the use of uh, Kahoot, I guess. Um, but mainly I want to focus on, on the idea of WhatsApp because of what happened during these classes. Uh, I was wondering what was going to happen. I was wondering what uh, the, the, the first thing I thought when they started the activity with WhatsApp is I'm going to be left out because they're going to be working in their mobile devices. I'm the observer. Uh, I do not have their, their cell phone numbers. So there's no way I can join into their group unless they have my number or they establish that in that moment. But uh, the teacher was uh, clever enough as to uh, turn on the screen and uh, synchronize uh, her WhatsApp into the screen. So I would be able to see what was going on in the conversation. Uh, so that's something that, uh, that solved a, a very, very, very quick issue in that sense. The second thing that happened is that, uh, and it amazed me, instructions uh, turn out to be very simple. In fact, instructions were so, so simple that the teacher didn't have to specify anything. She just said, turn on your cell phones and join the group. She didn't even have to say which group. She didn't even give any explanation or, or on how to do it. Uh, she didn't tell the students, I created a group called this. They all started to just um, uh, join the group. I, th I think there was some interaction. Some of them, I, I think maybe she didn't have the, the number of some others. But before the activity, they started to have some interaction in the WhatsApp. So um, somehow, uh, what this makes me think, it's about uh, integrating prior knowledge. A good example of how to integrate real life prior knowledge into the classroom, giving total confidence and total, uh, 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 and total power on the class to students themselves. I think this made them to... Uh, uh, before talking about any topic or whatever they learn about the language, this made them to concentrate themselves on the idea of something that they handle very well. None of them was saying, I cannot do it. I don't know how to do it. I don't understand the instructions. Uh, where is the group or how do I do it? None. The one that had the question was me, the teacher. <laughs> I, was, I was having the question of how am I going to see this? What's going to happen? And suddenly she turned on the screen an issue was solved. Yeah, so just to clarify, Pete, if I could, so the the your your students who are student uh, teachers are using WhatsApp with their students. Is that correct? Yes. Not, In, not so much using WhatsApp between you, their tutor, and the student teachers. Am not, I not correct? Really. This is just an example of a 15 minutes class in which they implemented the use of WhatsApp for teaching language. And uh, now, this is a trick. I think it was obvious that they were going to use WhatsApp because the topic for the class, uh, I'm going to focus mostly on one of the teachers. The topic of the class for this teacher was uh, texting acronyms in English, obviously. Uh, so before the, the activity, she had a, a couple of uh, minutes spending with the students going through acronyms in English, which... I could tell for some of them was a new topic in the sense of, yes, they know acronyms and they know a few of them, but there were several of them that uh, uh, appeared to be new. Uh, so they spent a couple of minutes uh, going through them and, and just uh, making sure that they understood the meaning. But most of the class was get right away into the use of it in real conversation in WhatsApp. So it was kind of natural, the topic in combination with the activity she decided to do. And it was a simple activity. But my, uh, my, um, my focus mostly is in what was happening as, um, as, a method, as a dynamic in the class. All the dynamic that was caused uh, beyond the topic and beyond what was happening. So that's why I wanted to split it first in the first moment um, of asking students to come and do the activity. Instructions became shorter. Everybody could follow. 
it, uh, the class didn't feel as a class. It just felt like a nice time for everybody to share something in WhatsApp. And, um, and everybody was really active. But after the instructions, there was no noise in the classroom. There was no sound. There appeared to be no communication live. And it was a kind of, um, uh, I don't know, like different environment because you saw everybody with their hands in the mobile devices, like uh, making faces to the mobile towards the mobile device, texting, working, but no noise around the classroom. So this started to create a new environment of communication. I will talk a little bit more about this, but I want to, before uh, continuing with this uh, idea um, of what happened in the class, I want to bring up something that yesterday, precisely, we were discussing with other teachers. And uh, one of the teacher asked, and, and, and it was a, a, an honest question. It was not just a sarcastic way to put it, but it was an honest question that he had. Uh, what's going on when people nowadays, especially young people, spend time in their mobile devices? And they spend a lot of time and um, doing a lot of things through the mobile device. And he even made the movement of the hands with the mobile device, looking at it, and just uh, like uh, the way to put it was like they are doing nothing. But the question that he had and the other question was, is are they really active when they are a lot of time of the day in that way? And we started a debate. So that would be the question uh, that I like uh, that question to bring to the table. And I would like to see to hear your opinion. Man. What, what about that um, uh, at the activity of the students when they are or, well, I'm talking about the students, obviously, when they are really on the mobile devices in the classroom. Yeah, so, I, I, you know, you, you bring up some points here, and, I, and I've got a lot of questions, mm -hmm. too, about the scenario that you were sharing with your, with your class. And I wonder if I could just ask a few questions just to clarify mm -hmm. context and then maybe lead into this second question that you're posing right. about, about the use of of mobile devices in the classroom. Okay, so I just want to, just to clarify context, the student teachers that you're working with as their tutor for this practicum class, mm -hmm. two or three students were using WhatsApp in their, in their 15 to 20 minute classes that they were using for this past, during, during the last semester. Right. And the, 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 the one class that you were sharing with us here, um, how big was the class and what what level was the class? How many students, more or less, were in the class? And could you speak to how that your student teacher uh, got them into a chat group that established the space in WhatsApp for them to do the activity? Okay, uh, this is we have we are we were around seventeen students, so it's one teacher, sixteen students. Uh, thinking about that a couple of them were not there that day we had like 15 students in the group at that moment well 15 teachers simulating being students right that's that's the point uh the level i don't have right now the lesson plan at hand i i'm going to try to look for it along the the top because i i didn't really thought about bringing all that context but um uh she delivers a lesson plan in which well obviously i kind of remember it was not uh, a beginner's class it was the kind of an intermediate and they always give a rational at the beginning of the class. Well, not, not really a rational, but a couple of lines so students know what's about it. I kind of remember she was talking about that uh, they shouldn't, uh, they, they didn't need to act. They, it was a class for their own age. And, uh, but yes, the level was, uh, I guess she said intermediate or something like that. I would need to verify that in the lesson plan. And uh, uh, the focus was uh, the, teaching vocabulary this has been teaching workshop is the first time they teach during the during the semester most of the topics they choose are vocabulary and uh simple grammar patterns and uh and in fact next semester we will be talking about uh teaching uh for listening speaking reading and writing mostly uh, but but the prior semester is mostly focused on, on this kind of uh 
uh, input sessions at uh, at the level they choose. I let them choose the level so they feel confident being the first time uh, they teach. How did she manage to 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 bring them into the WhatsApp group? I don't know. <laughs> she I think she she prepared before somehow and being a group that they are together in other classes uh, and in this class, uh, we, we, we are in constant contact, tutor and students, but the students also among themselves. I kind of suppose they may have a group for the class and that's why there were no further instructions when she said join the group, but I cannot tell that for sure because most of the activity we have for that class is on Facebook. Uh, we have a Facebook group for that class. But it wouldn't be weird to me that they have uh, a private space in which they don't have the tutor, actually, and, uh, and they can share some other things or, or be a little bit more confident to have an open talk. Uh, I don't know about that. And, 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 uh, but what I saw at the beginning is that maybe she was integrating a couple of the students to the group. So that's why I'm not really sure if she had the group before. If she created at the moment, if she did it just minutes before the class, that's something I don't really know. Uh, but uh, what I like is that nobody, nobody had a, a, a question. Nobody was lost on the way on what's going to happen. And I think that's because she selected, and not because of being what's well, being about WhatsApp, but but that meaning that she selected something that she was hundred percent sure that our classmates, well, the students could handle well. And that's something for me like bringing uh, real life into the classroom, activating prior knowledge from students into the classroom. And this time was, the activation was just telling them, get into the group, in the WhatsApp group, and that's it. So did they project the WhatsApp on a, on a larger screen or were they just all accessing the same conversation via their mobile device, their, their cell phones? They were uh, the idea was just to uh, get into the same conversation via WhatsApp, but she had the courtesy for me as an observer to have the conversation projected on the screen. But they were not working on the screen at all. They all time they were working on um, on their mobile devices. And so the teacher would basically just pose questions and they would respond kind of thing? Or can you speak a little bit to like how the conversation or discourse happened uh, throughout the, 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 this activity? She gave an instruction. Uh, uh, if I recall well, she uploaded a picture into the group. And she started to ask students to have responses to that picture to talk about that picture, obviously using the new words that uh, that were seen during the class. I think uh, that I think that's what that was one of the activities uh, because there was another activity very open in which she said just text something using the acronyms we just saw, and it started and the students started to um, to pop up. Uh, just comments, I guess. Oh, I, I kind of, let me see. I, I just found, they actually uploaded this in here. I'm going to share my screen, if you give me a minute. Sure. And for those who are watching through uh, Periscope, we are broadcasting this live. This is Teacher Learning Cast. Uh, thanks for coming in and watching. Feel free to leave comments or questions. Today's topic is what's up. And we're sharing an, an experience uh, with uh, teacher, student teachers. Uh, we teach at a university here in Mexico, and uh, my colleague Petey is sharing an experience with using WhatsApp with his uh, teacher students. And uh, so again, feel free if you're watching us through Periscope to uh, post any questions or comments uh, as you see fit. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. I was just uh, checking very quickly that I could actually share this because uh, I didn't ask my students for permission to, to go through this, but uh, I don't see anything that uh, gives away uh, anything about themselves. So uh, you're going to see names, obviously, but just the names. So uh, I'm going to go very quickly through it. So, uh, but yeah, and, and you're going to be able to tell what's that about. Just give me a second because I have to open something in here too. Mm -hmm. I'm just, what I'm doing right now is I'm opening the 
one, the student teacher posted for me the conversation, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. What you can see there. So uh, there are a couple of things we can analyze here. The first thing is that it was a new group created because we have los mensajes de este grupo están protegidos. So it was not a prior group. It was a group that she created in that moment, and uh, and it was the first time that they were testing texting in this group because we have this the the the, the privacy uh, message for for it for the first time. And then, uh, okay, there's somebody joining the group and uh, just uh, greeting. And that was the activity. Look at the simplicity of this. After giving, saying getting to the group, she just texts, I'm meeting with my friends in the weekend. And then the acronym, one of, uh, use, uh, giving an example using one of the acronym, asking the students actually if they're going to join. And the students are starting to text, obviously making sense of the conversation. And it's a very simple, simple, simple way because some of them start just to use the acronym directly, giving sense, you see? And then little by little, they start to create longer sentences. So again, how many students? You had about 17, 16, 17, 17 students yeah. in this class, right? Yes. All right, so, so they are around right now. Well, in this conversation, we have maybe like 15. Right. And uh, is there a way to save the chats? Yes, WhatsApp has an option to save the chat, and that's why she, she, she could send it to me later on. In fact, she uploaded it to the group in, in the, the Facebook group that we have for the class. And look how they start. Uh, um, to create longer conversations. Ah, that's right? good. I mean, a little bit, more, a little bit more. From just sending the acronym, they start to, 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 to produce a little bit more. And I was imagining this in a real class with real students, and uh, and I kind of imagine the freedom that they. I mean, imagine the creativity. More students involved in one conversation like this, more topics easily can come up. And more and more, uh, they can go more and more and more into a natural conversation, obviously using whatever level they have. And there is no problem when somebody is just uh, staying at the level of using the acronyms, somebody creating a longer sentence and maybe a longer text. I don't kind of, I don't remember if I have longer text in here, but look at this. Right? Oh, they're talking about me in there. <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm just thinking a lot of different options here, uh, even deeper thinking questions. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, looking at some challenges, though, uh, you know, because of the way that the chat unfolds, yeah, you're basically it's kind of linear, right? So the the conversations can go back and forth, and you could right. actually they could have conversations with classmates amongst them themselves. Right. So it would be kind of a matter of depending on how many students are participating in chatting at one given time, right. how how many times or how much information is being shared with whether or not all the students can engage equally, right? And I'm I'm kind of thinking in the back of my mind. You know, how would this set be uh, work most effectively and efficiently for really making sure that all students more or less are participating right. equally and some aren't getting left behind if perhaps they're not able to keep up with the chat or keep up with conversations? Because I know from personal experience, you know, depending on if, you know, if, there, if you've got a lot of people in a chat, sometimes it can be a challenge to keep up and, and really even decide who you want to respond to and even what topics you want to respond to depending on right. – you know the, the 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 yeah the topics that are being exchanged. Yeah, that that's what I thought myself too. In the sense that, um, I mean, not exactly like that, but something similar. Thinking about um, 
bring in a rubric or something just to keep track of how many answers do you see from somebody but how hard could it be to follow that's something that i that, that i had in mind like how do you evaluate or do you sit later on and take the time to go back through the conversation and analyze what everybody's doing and not just to 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 give a grade i'm, I'm meaning evaluation in the sense of uh is there something i have to address in my class it, was it clear? It was the, it, it, was there something that was misused, or is there is there a pattern that I see a mistake that is recurrent that I have to address in the class? Things like those. That that's what I was thinking about. But uh, I I thought uh, my first thought is that you may uh, you may take it like I. Uh, we're going to go through the activity. We're going to make it fluent. We're going to leave the students flow somehow, uh, keeping the focus on the, on on the question or the topic which what which uh, she did right she was uh, trying to keep students in line uh, to the question to the idea of using the acronym to answer the question about the party and if you see there are no more questions from the teacher i mean she kind of focused just in one but if she if she wanted she could have prepared with a couple of questions like three four or five questions to lead the students to a change, a turn into the conversation. Yeah, I mean, because a lot of possibilities open here, you see? Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, the WhatsApp, I think, lends itself well to a one to many type of conversation. So, like what you're saying, the teacher posts a question or maybe an image or something, some sort of prompt, and then let them basically uh, reply to that one question. So, the one to many uh, conversational flow, I think. Right. You know, I think WhatsApp lends itself very well to, to that type of thing. You mentioned evaluation or, or assessment, I think, in terms of assessment. Mm -hmm. And again, maybe not necessarily for a grade or maybe for a grade. But, you know, one of the things that comes to mind with this type of exchange, this type of activity using WhatsApp, is how can the teacher evaluate in real time? Right, because you mentioned that they can save the chat and later the teacher can go through more closely and, and evaluate or assess the student's mm -hmm. performance. But I'm thinking more in terms of real time. How can the teacher really go in and see and modify and really assess the students uh, two ways? One, that they are, in this case, using those acronyms, you know, um, yeah, they're using the, the, the amount of acronyms that they should be using. And two, that enough students are participating, right? And I know that you know that you can see who's re replying to the chat, and and that's fine. But I'm wondering if you've got even with 15 or 17, 16, 17 yeah. students that you're able to see whether or not they're more or less equally participating, or you can right. maybe find how was she able to, or he was your student teacher able to determine in real time whether or not right. some students weren't participating because then sh she could maybe intervene and you know may and try to right get I, everyone to participate okay the, what i think what you're talking about here is about how much control can the teacher have somehow not in not in the sense of of being in control of everything no but yeah being able to uh uh, pause and take the time to analyze to retake all, all, all that I mentioned before that they, they they may may do when they go through it slowly, but doing in real time as you said because it may be necessary. My question in here I, I, would be like, um, how much would you prefer to take care of this issue over the fluency, naturality, and reality that? the fluency of the conversation gives you. I think uh, we would need to make a balance because I wouldn't have an answer to tell you, no, I would go for, for the natural uh, way of, of having these conversations or the fluency that we have, the spontaneous, because maybe students may decide to change the topic at some point. They start to talk about the party and they dance and they start to talk about uh, the last time somebody wanted to dance or something that, that makes everybody else to refocus their attention. And uh, so I remember we talked before about these opportunities in classroom where, where you can actually see students interested in something that you can pick at that moment and focus on that. So uh, I think we, we need, uh, it's something, uh, and it's something to put on the table. We would need to analyze 
uh, what can we do? How can we prepare? How can we be prepared for this? How far can we let them go? Uh, and I think, and I think most of these questions, most most of these questions may be answered by the idea of having the teacher really, really uh, focus on the objective. And going back again to prior talks, not just about the objective of the moment of the activity, the wide view objective. We, uh, and, and, and this would be the hard part to decide. Am I going to focus just on the activity objective, in the topic objective? Am I going to focus on this class's objective? Am I going to focus on the week's objective? Am I going to focus on the course objectives? Or what can I do? What can I have in my mind? to let this conversation flow. And I think this is a matter of planning, sitting down and being really smart on how you're gonna ask, how you, what you're gonna put there in the conversation so you lead the students well towards the idea and uh, having this control of the situation by planning. And then let, let it flow. Let it flow and then wait for at the end and then take your time to go back, review, and see how it works. And they give, and this may give you a lot of uh, food for reorganizing the way you plan, the objectives you selected, and also what you have to address, what you have to uh, retake for with your students, what you have to reinforce, what you can actually tell that they already nailed, and that's it. I don't know. Uh, well, not that's it, right? But something that you can actually recycle easily. I mean, a lot of things may happen in, in this sense. And, and, and you see all of these aspects come to mind by a simple fact, right? We have something real from their lives that gives them total um, easiness in the dynamic of the class. It's like they know the class before coming to it and they just integrate uh, the new language topic, right? Yeah, so for me, this is really the difference between incidental and intentional learning. Right. And, and at the same time, meeting objectives, because we're talking formal education, that's our context here, right. the difference between the objective, the course objectives and individual objectives or in, uh, objectives for the individual learner. So you've got basically four different ways of looking at these objectives that you're talking about, incidental, intentional versus, yep. and also uh, those objectives, those course objectives and individual objectives, mm -hmm. how, how all four of those uh, emerge or come about through planning. Because again, you know, you can only plan so much, right? So, you know, we can all relate as teachers to things that are coming up and emerge that we maybe didn't anticipate, right? And there are learning opportunities that can, kind of pop up. Yep. And we need to try to learn how to take advantage. First, we need to recognize them, and then we need to take advantage of those as much as possible, while at the same time realizing that we have course objectives and, all, and a, a given amount of time to achieve those objectives. So that's where the complexity comes in for us mm -hmm. as teachers, is organizing and planning as much as possible, but really trying to also take advantage in real time those opportunities. And I think that's what you're speaking to is, you know, what – what do we do and how do we kind of leverage those opportunities and those objectives? You know, maybe, uh, you know, the objective of this type of activity is just to get them to communicate more that it may be to, maybe the goal is to try to create more of a community learning experience in the classroom because maybe before they weren't working together or communicating together. So maybe the whole objective of that was to get them to work uh, together to have this mindset of sharing information and, and maybe you know, uh, you know, learning from each other type of thing. Right. And maybe that was intentional, maybe that was planned, and even perhaps maybe that's part of the class objective, or maybe it's not. I mean, it totally depends on, on, the, on, the, on the situation. Right. Uh, but from a teacher-student standpoint, I think that's where the conversation needs to be is, you know, look at the class or the, the school that they're teaching and the syllabus and then their own planning and then what happens in their own class and having them really unpack all of what we're talking about here, right. the incidental versus the intentional, the course objectives versus the individual objectives and having them make sense and justify what they're doing in class 
uh, in those terms, right? Because again, those are things we face every day as teachers, right? Whether we recognize it or not is we're constantly playing back and forth and okay, there's a learning experience here. Is this, you know, part of the class goals or not? Maybe we veer off for, for a day and, and we don't look at the class goals for a while because we have these other goals that we need to kind of address before we go on to the next day's lesson that is more directed towards uh, the course goals. So, but yeah, I think those are some interesting uh, things to consider. And uh, those are things I would think that a, a student teacher would need to be uh, discussing with their tutor and amongst themselves as well as in-service teachers, of course, all of us can relate to those those issues. Right, and uh, well, there are more things I want to talk about uh, about this experience specifically. But uh, now that you bring it up about um, the community for learning, it's precisely uh, related to an article when when I decided that that I was going to talk about this in, in in teacher learning cast. I started to look for information about the use of WhatsApp in the classroom. And there were general ideas about it, but I also found an interesting article um, uh, about the use of uh, WhatsApp uh, in a class. So let me just get here. This is in the University of Hong Kong. I want to share my screen again? Okay, can you see that? Yes. All right, uh, this is uh, research on mobile, mobile instant messaging support for teaching and learning in higher education and uh, University of Hong Kong in the Department of Mathematics and Information Technology. And uh, it's a kind of an interesting article. Uh, it, it talks very quick, quickly, I'm not gonna read it, but I'm just gonna uh, uh, go through it uh, very quickly so you can see it's from 2016. And uh, it takes, I like that it takes uh, a lot of information from different sources about uh, texting, about uh, instant messaging, and, uh, and, and it tries to look for information about mobile instant messaging, obviously for learning all of this, right? And uh, the research indeed is just to see if the use of WhatsApp for a class, a course, is beneficial or not. Uh, what happened here is that, uh, if I recall well, they had two groups in which they, uh, they wanted to monitor the use of WhatsApp. In one group, in, in, I mean, it was uh, the same course to, uh, and, and they divided uh, the, the use of WhatsApp in two groups. I don't really know if, if the students knew this. I suppose they didn't know that they were split in two groups. In one group, uh, they had WhatsApp and they only had administrative information about the course. Logistics and uh, maybe dates and appointments, things, uh, deliveries and things like those, I suppose. And in the other group, they had, uh, a, a besides this, they had exchanges about uh, the contents of the course. They had extra material and extra information. And what the article talks about is uh, that they actually were giving a lot, a lot of extra information beyond the classroom, not in class time, in other hours. And that was, in fact, one of the aspects to consider, how they reacted to this and, and, and one of the conclusions is, is that no, um, the majority of them, they didn't mind to have these interactions and to have all this information and extra activities beyond the classroom. So in these two groups, they started to see how it worked and they applied an exam and they did, on, uh, they did a very, um, it looks like a, a, a well-controlled statistic work on the, uh, on the, um, tests they applied, well, the, the exams they applied at the beginning and at the end to make a difference between the learning of one group and the other and have a background, a statistical background on uh, assuring actually that the group that use WhatsApp for the academic purpose, exchanging uh, information, material questions, talks with the tutor, that they actually 
uh, was easier for them to go through the group and obtain uh, better results in that sense. In fact, that's uh, uh, they put it in, in different words, right? But that's pretty much the interpretation I gave it. You can read the article just to see the exact words in case I'm just uh, uh, me saying something or using uh, maybe a, a word that I shouldn't in that sense. But the, the main idea is that they are actually, uh, in this comparison, they are actually finding out that the use of WhatsApp for the academic purposes is effective, that students don't mind, and they find it easy, and they don't really mind using WhatsApp even in extra hours, and, and there's no complaint about, oh, teacher is sending me material in the afternoon or, or, or whatever, anytime out of, out of class or out of the school, and... Uh, and, and and it's kind of, it would be interesting to to look through all of it read it all and see pretty much cuz at the end it's a simple question is it is it working is it useful or not and and they kind of have a background to say uh, why and 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 how it's it's been ethical in that sense and, and, and it goes along with what you say uh, about creating the community the intention of whether whether uh, intentional or, or whether parallel to what, whatever the teacher was focusing on, creating this community may, may promote a lot. I mean, this was a simulated class, right? In just a moment. But in a real class, uh, who, who can tell you if uh, they keep the group for good and they start to use it for other things and they start to share uh, even homeworks? Why not? Did you do the homework and instead of doing it one hour before the class or five minutes before the teacher arrives, they share this homework or this task or, or they start helping each other through other means of creating this community. And I think uh, uh, I haven't thought about the work, uh, this this word exactly community when I read the article, but that's exactly what, what is happening uh, according in, in, this, in this research. They're creating a community uh, which goes beyond the classroom, which, which, which I think looks for the ideal of uh, not uh, being in the classroom just to pass a course, but for learning something for good, uh, and 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 creating a community in such a way that there are no walls anymore and there are no timing anymore for this class, right? Uh, and, and that's a decision that that each student is going to make. And, and and going back to what you mentioned about who participates more and less, okay, during the classroom, but beyond the classroom. That's everybody's decision in that sense, as long as they fulfill uh, the minimum requirement or the standard requirements, if you want to put it in standard uh, measures point or uh, in the learning they develop. What do you think about that, Ben? Yeah, one of the things that stood out to me, and it kind of speaks to what you're, you're addressing here um, about really does it work or not. Um, I was looking in the limitations of the study section. I want to read a few lines here right. because I think it's re relevant to our discussion here. Mm -hmm. It says, it seemed that students in the experimental group received more instructional materials and learning ma opportunities than, the, in the, than in the control group. They had more possibilities to interact with the learning materials, their peers, and the instructor. Therefore, it is expected that students in the experimental group would perform better than those in the control group on the post-test and the pre-test. Now, for me, the question is here, if you want to ask the question, does WhatsApp work or does any technology work that you're using, right, as a, a to test? Um, you know, I think this is a good point here that they mentioned here in the limitations is if the technology creates more learning opportunities, more possibilities, more interaction with both themselves as students and also with the instructor, right? That's really the the issue here. Maybe right. not so much whether it's WhatsApp. Now, you might say okay. WhatsApp okay. causes that opportunity, but let's say that in another context, another type of technology is used, but also increases opportunities for students to interact with the instructor that includes more um opportunities to interact or use instructional materials, et cetera, then really that's that's the thing. That's the issue. That's really what it's about is what technologies can be used to create those possibilities. And, you know, and in a different context, WhatsApp, you know, perhaps may not may not be the best option. Um, it's really going to depend on what's available, right, for the student and teacher. Uh, I know us here in Mexico, a lot of us can relate to WhatsApp because it's it's very much used. Uh, it's very popular and 
and everyone uses it pretty much. So, you know, that's, that's our context. And I think that's why it's so relevant. Our conversation today is with WhatsApp, but in another context, it might be, you know, something else. But I think that this kind of relates to your earlier question about teachers and how they feel about their students using uh, yeah. their mobile devices or not. Right. Uh, in, in fact, uh, yes, I, I agree with what you said, because that's exactly what I meant by the walls on the timing. I think uh, to, what, what technology is doing, uh, my opinion on that is that technology speeds up everything. It gives you a, a, a way to, to, when technology comes to you, the first thing that happens is that everything goes faster. Deliveries, uh, the delivery time, the space, I mean, the, the, the limitations of a space in the classroom and the limitations of time, I think they are reduced by technology, any, any, any technology that is used, and mostly communication technology, uh, like uh, the, starting from the, um, the email, uh, WhatsApp, Facebook, or any other platform, it helps you to reduce, I, I, that's my, my opinion, it, it helps you to reduce the limitations of space and time and, and gives you the freedom, which uh, for some people may not be that good, <laughs> but it gives you the freedom to decide a lot on when and how. And yes, I, 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 this is uh, something that I also, that also call my attention about the limitations that in fact they are they are kind of putting on the table the idea of well it doesn't have a lot to do with technology but it has to do a lot of with the extra material and extra conversations well yeah it does have to do with technology in that sense because that's what gave you the opportunity to have more exchanges and more conversations because of the reduction of the walls and the time limitations I think my idea would go towards that sense. Obviously, well, I'm not an expert in that, in, 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 in that but, um, and I think we would need to really, as you, as you I think we, we made a point today with this that, that, we, that we presented, what I was trying to share with you and the comments you made, put on the table the complexity of uh, trying to, take the most advantage, the most possible advantage from the use of technology, right? So it can be very simple as, oh, today I'm going to use this. I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to send the message through WhatsApp and they're going to answer and that's it. It can be as simple as that in the sense of thinking about it. But in the sense of actually planning, taking the advantage, uh, making the right questions, making the right decisions for the right reasons, it's a very complex uh, thing to process before, but I think that's teacher's job. That's our job as teachers to be, to take the time to reflect and analyze and plan what's going to happen. Also knowing that we are not almighty and, <laughs> and we need us, uh, we, we need to, to, uh, we have our limitations and, 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 and we may not get to the hundred percent potential of the application or whatever you are using, but at least trying to reach a wider view of why am I using this and what's going to happen and how can I take the major advantage? Maybe, I don't know, I'm just uh, talking out of my town right now. Maybe something as simple as instead of a question, I'm going to put out a sentence. It's going to change the whole view of the, of the situation and it's going to lead the students towards different paths. I saw it when, when the teacher had an activity I don't remember if it was the same teacher or a different one. I think it was a different one. Uh, and put a picture instead of a question. And the task was, uh, here's a picture. Make a, make a sentence. I think it was a description of the picture, something like that. And they started to write sentences. And they started to upload pictures. And the teacher had to make limitations. Like, okay, hold on. This is about language, so we need sentences, not the picture. Please uh, avoid. Let's focus on the picture I sent. And 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 she had to to go on this control because um, because she had a purpose for it, right? And she wanted to be again on control of the situation to have the practice and reinforcement of uh, descriptions, obviously in that sense. Uh, Another thing that happened, and it's another whole point of view, and I, and, and I don't know if we 
want to really go over all of this because I don't have a lot of uh, comments, but questions. <laughs> it's the communication dynamic that was established in the classroom. And I think this is uh, this was one of the main aspects I wanted to talk about, but I, I, I didn't really have to. I didn't, I didn't really want to make it the center because maybe there's a lot to say about it. And, and I'm really, really, really uh, poorly informed about it. But here is what I saw. The communication dynamic in the classroom. I just, I mentioned before that everything was quiet for the rest of the class. There were some noises. There were some instructions from the teachers, but it, from the teacher. But the instructions were like just naming somebody, just uh, making an expression like, ah, oh, not that, please. Or something that if if I if if I were the student involved in the activity, I immediately would understand what was going on. But not being the student, being an external viewer, it was a different communication dynamic. Communication, life, I mean, the online communication was the texting, obviously. Pictures, because they started to send pictures, and that's why the teacher wanted to limit it. But then the live communication, the face-to-face -face communication, to begin with, was not face-to-face -face because they were looking at the screens. But they were there in the same classroom. And the communication transformed into noises, laughs, signs, uh, like things that everybody would understand if they were actually in the conversation. And they were complementing what was happening. So this was kind of new for me in the sense of I had never paid attention to what you do during a conversation, a texting conversation. And I think that, that would be one setting, me texting to somebody that is not here. But here is a bunch of people in the same room texting to each other creating a new way to communication. An example, a very simple example about this is there were moments in which they would laugh and the number of laughs, the number of ha-has was the same for everybody. It looks, it sounds like a chorus. Everybody was like, ha-ha-ha-ha. And again, the silence in the classroom. So it, it intrigued me in the sense that this is a new way of communication. This is something that I hadn't seen before. And what's the potential of it? Can you picture that? Did I make my yeah? <laughs> make yeah, sense and you, you said that it's a new way to for them to communicate it. I would argue that in fact, it's the way that they're used to communicating. It just happens to be now in another language, or maybe using you know different abbreviations, right. and or maybe it's the same abbreviations. I'm not even sure, but but the, the my point here is they are actually comfortable with that form of communication texting you know because right. they done they do it every day all, all day <laughs> and that that's their probably you know they don't pick up the phone like we used to do and call you know call our friends they just text each other right so right. that is and i think that explains a lot um even though it's an additional language it's a, a language learning class that they are very comfortable, very familiar with that form of communication. And I think that's why it works, because uh, the teachers try to create an educative experience in a way that they can relate to, the way that they're used to communicating. Right. Um, one thing, though, that I would just throw out there, and we've talked a little bit about this in the past, is that it, with any activity, right, and an activity needs to be engaging, it needs to be effective and efficient. And I think here we're talking a lot about engagement, right, and, and I draw parallels to this type of experience with maybe those in gamification. You know, the students who are playing games, they can easily get engaged, they like it, right? So they are, they are focused on a particular goal or purpose of that game or objective of that game, and they they're all in, right? They they enjoy it. But I think we also have to think about the effectiveness and the efficiencies of that activity so that, you know, that there is a learning going on. And, I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I think that the challenge here with regard to being effective and efficient is really going back to our discussions of assessment and planning and goals and making mm -hmm. sure that we are 
as we plan for our classes that we have an idea about the assessment. We know going into any type of activity with our students how we are planning on assessing. Again, this could be for a grade or not, but how are we gonna how are we gonna assess our students and what type of evidence are we going to rely on as teachers in order for us to make inferences on whether or not they uh, they have achieved the educative goals. Okay, so we're looking for evidence. What kind of evidence are we going to rely on, and and how are we going to provide feedback in that particular activity so that we can at the end of the day say, okay, our students know something and they can do something uh, in, in terms of the course I goals. I think you're making a very important point there because this is something we struggle a lot, not only with that group, but with other groups, which are actually even in, in teaching assistantship, which is they work as assistant of a teacher. And, and I struggle a little bit with that idea of um, uh, having games and activities in which uh, the class flows well and everything seems fine and uh, students enjoy the activity and the teacher has certain control of the group or, or, or total control of the discipline in the group. Uh, but at the end, uh, the language and the, the objectives for, for the language are lost. They don't actually use it or they rarely use it or from a series of features that have to be used as to all the students use only one or activities which take really long. I give an example to my students like, are you gonna ask a team to go and run and pick up the balloon and come back and then run around the, the chair and then give it to the classmate and then the classmate is gonna, pick the, is gonna pick the paper and the paper is gonna be passed on and then the last one is gonna open the paper and it's gonna write on the board, blue. And it's like, how long are you gonna take to write on the board three, five words, just words, and how long is the process? Is, this, is it worth it? Yes, they are having fun. Yeah, maybe it's an activity in which you intend them to relax, good in that sense, but what if not? What if it's your core activity for practice? What if it is an activity for actually presenting a new topic and you are, and you are misleading towards spending the time in other aspects? Uh, pretty much the same. How much are we really prepared to have the situation or, pre, uh, or have the proper questions or guides or control if needed in order to make the use of technology, in this case, WhatsApp, Facebook, or any other instant messaging uh, platform, not to lose the track of the actual practice of the language or use of the language or presentation, because I actually go for the idea of having an activity in which they work and you take the advantage of presenting something new along the way. So, uh, yes, I totally agree on you uh, in that sense. It's, 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 I think it's the main thing. And, and it's, again, talking about the objectives. I, I always go with the idea of saying objectives, and I know you say assessment, but we're talking about the same channel, right? Focusing ourselves in the preparation of the class because the objectives come from the, if you talk about the assessment, you're gonna have the outcomes. It, obviously you're talking about the objectives too, and, and it's a line in the class towards this. And along the line, these new technologies, which totally engage students. Yeah, so when I say objectives and assessment, I'm really look, thinking in terms of desired results. I'm kind of going, right. I'm picking from uh, Wiggins and McTighe's understanding by design, but you basically that, what are the goals, objectives, what are the desired results, right? Because that needs to be established first. Again, we're in formal education, so that's going to come primarily from the syllabus. It also could come from an individual student standpoint, depending on the situation, but, but there's goals, right? right? Now, from based on those objectives or goals, then you think about the assessment. Before you start to teach or before you start to think about instruction, you think about the types of evidence that you're going to need as a teacher in, in order to mm -hmm. you know um, understand if the, the students have achieved the goals so you choose those assessments first maybe their performance tasks maybe their academic prompts maybe they are handouts their worksheets their quizzes their tests whatever those assessments are maybe e-portfolios whatever they are 
how will they collectively come together, right, in order to provide you, the teacher, the student teacher, enough information to make these inferences? Do my students know this? Have they learned? Do they, are they able to do certain things? So that's kind of what I'm meaning by assessment, try, trying to look at it in a general term, again, whether it's for a grade or not. But thinking of it in terms of those goals and assessments, and when you're looking at using WhatsApp or any technology or any game or whatever, that needs to be uh, that needs to come in mind. And one of the things that I would think would be a big challenge for the class that you've shared with us today, Petey, is because your students are only teaching uh, a fifteen to fifteen to twenty minute class that's basically an activity maybe there's uh, you know one yeah, or two yeah. activities but essentially right, right. it's it's one activity that they are going to implement in that class so the la the last thing i'd kind of throw out there to think about is the idea or the importance of activity sequencing so so maybe one particular activity is super engaging and maybe it's not super effective and efficient in terms of overall linguistic goals, but, let, but maybe it serves a purpose like we talked about earlier. The students aren't working together as a community, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a fun activity with my students to try to get them to, you know, have, you know, to get, come together as a community so that that next activity can be more effective and efficient you know, after having done this activity. So I don't mean to say that necessarily every single activity needs to be effective, efficient, and engaging, although that's something we all need to keep in mind. But also look at it over time as you implement one activity to the next and look at the sequence of activities so that over time, throughout maybe a lesson or at least certainly a week, there's a lot of effective and efficient and engaging learning that's going on so that you know, at the end of the course, they, they're more likely to have achieved their, their goals. So I think there's different ways to look at it uh, and things to consider. And uh, I think in that particular case, if I had a student teacher who's having a class that's super engaging, but maybe less effective and efficient, at least they're able to share some insight about maybe a, another activity that's going to come later that might be more effective and efficient. I'm going to try to put it in, in, in a phrase that I just wrote from everything you are mentioning in here. And maybe it's not that fair to reduce it to something that simple, but, but it may uh, give some clarity to, to some teachers. It's not doing it for the sake of doing it. It's not just I'm going to use WhatsApp because, oh, it's fun and it's in bulk and they know how to do it. It's not for the sake of doing it. And it's the same for any other kind of activity, whether technology or not involved. I think that's what, what, that's what you mean. Like... It's, it's, it's not about that. And, and planning is not about planning about the activity and thinking about, oh, I'm going to do a Jeopardy game. Uh, it's about, all right, I mean, you can, you have an idea, you like that, you saw it was engaging. All right, you have a purpose for using that activity. But parallel to that, at least parallel, if not before the, the activity, the the objective, the, what is the point of it? What is the, what, what, what is it, what purpose is it going to serve? And at least put it parallel to the activity, not at the end, not after you have the whole idea and the whole plan. And then you oh, so and, and then uh, what's the oh, I'm going to ask this question. I'm going to ask the other question and they're going to. Oh, yes. But what's what's the purpose of all of this? Oh, they practice the language. Well, well yes. If you play a movie, it's going to be the same. They are going to practice the language, uh, whether they pay attention or not. They're going to be listening to the words. Right. But not just for the sake of doing it. Uh, and finally, uh, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to share. Just uh, uh, to clarify a little bit uh, about the, the the new communication ban. What I mean by that is uh, is not uh, not about the communication in the texting, but the communication that occur in the classroom. Uh, normally, you have when you text, uh, it's yourself laughing yourself or doing something for yourself, interacting through the texting, but in this case, they were in the same classroom. So what I sense, and I might be wrong, but that's what I sense that everything they did, like the kind of laughs, the kind of sounds, the kind of looking and giving a, a sight to somebody in the classroom or trying to call somebody's attention that was somebody that was focused on the mobile, but, but trying to look at him or a signal or something. I think that's the new communication. Well, not really new, right? But the new dynamic I saw 
uh, because in some moments it even complemented when they, what they were texting. They, uh, for example, when you text to somebody that is not here, uh, you write the LOL, right? To make them aware, or you put an smiley face or something to make them aware of the feeling. What was happening here is that, yes, they were texting some of the acronyms and, I mean, for, for referring to what they were feeling or they wanted to express, but most of the time they were not putting it there. They weren't doing it physically on purpose so that the other person that was close would tell. And that was exactly what the teacher was doing, what the teacher was saying, like, oh, not that, or uh-uh, or, oh, uh, I don't know, oh, Juanito. And, and Juanito immediately understood what was that about. So that's what I meant, like the, like a new dynamic in communication, because... In class, basically, is in, what you're saying. Yeah, a new way class, of communicating class. Class. I yeah. see. Yeah. I see. Yeah, that's what I meant, because uh, if I weren't looking at the, at the conversation in the, in, in, in the screen... I wouldn't know what they what they were meaning by all these sounds, and I would have taken them like um, uh, they're laughing or they're. I mean, I wouldn't consider that. But since I was looking at the complementation of the sounds and the signaling, and the, and 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 uh, some of them were even patting each other, the ones that were next to each other, things like those. So, and, and looking at the conversation is what well, like what is happening here in the classroom? It's a complement of what they're texting. It's and, almost like a multimodal, multi-way yeah. of communicating, basically, because they're communicating one way through through WhatsApp, and then they're also through verbal, nonverbal communication, communicating yeah. with each other, and then the teacher, maybe a, th a third way of communicating with the, the teacher student. So right. I think it's a combination. I think that that's new. Yeah. That that is important. Yeah, that's that's a good. And my thing. mind started to to fly a little bit, thinking about all right. We have a, this is a different setting. There's a setting in which you text somebody that is not there, and it's away, and 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 it's the physical uh, expressions that you make maybe for yourself. Right, I don't. I'm not sure about that, but I can. I would say, therefore, yourself. But what about when uh, we are? It's two of us in the same room. One of us with the mobile device, and a third party away. I mean, this. This is what started to come to my mind. How many combinations and how communication changes? I. I don't think it's going to be the same. Me with the mobile by myself. Because, uh, for example, in my case, I can share to you that I talk to myself. When somebody texts me something, I even say something to myself, right? But having somebody in my side, like trying to connect, telling me what to write to the third party, it changes my communication dynamic. But it's the same that I saw in the classroom. It changed again because they were, uh, they knew what they were texting and they were there physically too. So mm, I just saw a new world of opportunities in there. <laughs> Yeah, I really don't see much of a division when I think of the way we, one communicates and the way one learns. There's so much overlap between those two things that I think this discussion of how we communicate and how we learn, it's really almost the same conversation. And I think this is the one thing, that the main takeaway that I have from t our, our discussion today is with the use of technology, whatever it is, whether it's WhatsApp or whatever, that we're thinking in terms of how are we going to communicate and how our students, of course, are going to communicate and how are they learning and really think of that as being the same thing, really, and, and trying to bring those together in terms of, you know, a, a formal educational setting uh, that really is going to be the most productive and most useful for both the teacher and the student. Right, and that's why I enjoyed this talks, Ben, because uh, there's always a lot to say. Uh, you have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, different views of the situation, and I think uh, that's what complements a little bit. Because uh, I don't know, our different backgrounds come to 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 see things from different points of view, and that's what why what enriches this is. It enriches these conversations and, and give us uh, a lot of light. As I mentioned at the beginning, more questions and answers today in that sense. But I, I hope you guys enjoy. And, 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 and if the ones that are just joining the Facebook live transmission, you can go back to the talk. I think it's really interesting. And, and, and I, I would like to hear if anybody has something to say, something about this or experiences or opinions or or even studies if, if you want to and see... Uh, and see how how this 
uh, evolving of uh, materials and technology give us a new whole world of opportunities in teaching. Yeah, and I would add, I would just conclude as well that when you're thinking about whether or not to use technology or not, you know, we have some teachers who just are adamant about no technology. It's a waste of time. Uh, they they're it's unproductive. Students are just on Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. It's the same. <laughs> yeah, it's like those are the wrong types of questions. The, that's the wrong perspective. The the perspective should be as we've already talked about a lot today is. How do we want our students to communicate? What are the assessment? How are we going to assess? What are the goals? And then what sources, materials, technologies, objects, whatever, what resources that we have available can we use collectively to foster or promote those, those types of decisions? The decisions are not technological first. The decision should be what are the goals? How are we going to assess all these things that we're talking about to, that in a normal classroom or any type of classroom and then choose the tools that best uh, help us at, or at least hopefully achieve those those goals. Of course, there are going to be mistakes and all of that. But the main thing is to have think of don't think about technology first. And I think a lot of times when students are just blanketly talking about, oh, I'll never use uh, cell phones in my class. Uh, th that's the wrong perspective. And not to say that they shouldn't be used, because maybe after having made the right decisions, you might choose not to use cell phones, and then that that's okay. But most mm -hmm. of the time, it's been my experience that people are making those decisions blanketly, saying, oh, I'll never use WhatsApp, I'll never use this technology, or I'll never use cell phones, without really making other decisions first. So that's, the I think, the takeaway that I would want to, yeah. that I want to share with everyone today is make those decisions first about... Ha ways of communicating assessment and, and, and et cetera, and then choose the, the types of technologies and then hopefully find a place, a community, maybe with, it's with us or maybe it's with someone else, but share those experiences with your colleagues and other and teachers that, that are, are doing similar things so that you're in a situation where you can learn from each other. I just want to make this very quick. I came across a comment in Facebook, a lot of my ex-students I follow, they follow me or we befriend each other through Facebook. And so I get the, some of these posts and I, I came across one a couple months ago from a teacher who was really just burned out. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was just sharing his experiences, his horrible experiences as a teacher. Mm -hmm. And he was just really just bummed. And um, I, I think that, you know, teacher burnout is, is real and it happens. And I think the, the best way to really address teacher burnout is to find the communities that resonate with you. Find the online communities or face-to-face -face communities, whether it's within your school or without your, outside of your school. But find the educators, the teachers, the individuals, the people that you can, that you can relate to, that you can learn from, that you can be motivated uh, by and and reach out and share your experiences and I have found me personally that doing that uh, you have you it's motivating you you are less likely in my point of view to get less burned out because you're always in a situation or you can you at least know where to find those situations where you can be part of the conversation I think that's the biggest takeaway is to be part of the conversation and and really connect with other educators so that that you can have a situation where you can uh, learn from from others and this is one of the reasons why Petey and I do this is because we want to reach out and connect with other teachers and other educators so that we can also learn from them learn from you our audience and have again this more community type uh, situation where we can uh, share uh, experiences so I just wanted to throw that out there and uh, say, Petey, thank you for, for sharing your experience. Uh, this has been a really good talk. I think that there's a lot of key takeaways that uh, one can gather from uh, listening to today's broadcast. And I want to encourage everyone to share their experiences. We're really interested in your experience, especially with WhatsApp, if you're using it, if you've yeah. thought about using it. Um, you don't have to be an expert. Just share what you're thinking about doing or if you've used it in class Maybe it's it was a challenge for you, but share those with uh, with the community, and um, and be part of the solution. 
Right, and uh, we talk about a lot of things. We give a lot of opinions. It's our opinion, and and, and it's uh, and it's what uh, our experiences and our background tell us to go through. But uh, feel free to make comments, to join, and this is a hangout, so it's easy to join whenever you want. Just let us know in advance. And we can program something to discuss. I want to thank everybody that is joining. I want to thank Claudia, Fanny, uh, Rudy, Veronica, uh, Ceci, Nancy, uh, Fernando, uh, Dante, Gabo, Carlos, Saul, Ale. Thank you. Uh, and uh, uh, Mauri, thank you for, for joining us today. Uh, I, I remind you that the Facebook transmission that I do, it's a secondary transmission. It's a different view, a different sound. The better way to see Teacher Learning Cast is to click on the link above and uh, go to the source in which you can see us in first plane. And um, well, I think we took a lot of time today, but an interesting talk. Just finally, uh, what I was saying, we talk about a lot of things and, and don't feel overwhelmed that things have to cover everything at once. You can do one step at a time. So decide what to do and go ahead. Try it. Let us know how it works. Yeah, and we have no objections. If you want to uh, join us in a subsequent broadcast, in this live broadcast, and be part of the, the actual recording to talk about a topic we've already discussed. If somebody wants to talk about uh, WhatsApp and their experiences next week, that's that's all good. Uh, we have, you know, we we schedule certain talks and we try to mix it up as much as possible. But if anyone wants to share, it can be about basically any topic that's related to education. And feel free to reach out to us and let us know. Again, uh, we would be happy to have bring you into the live uh, broadcast. We've had some really good discussions in the past, and um, we really get a lot out of bringing in other educators, other voices into our talks. So uh, I guess we'll sum it up there. Petey, thanks a lot for, for uh, sharing your experiences. Thanks everyone for, for listening and we'll see everyone in the next broadcast. Bye, keep on learning.